Hello everyone and welcome back to Silas Pro Cats and welcome back to another ARC review. Today we're going to be talking about the short story collection called Among Thorns and Stardust by seven different authors who've taken seven different fairy tales and turned them into some sci-fi-esque short story. Let's go. So first and foremost, um, Shout out to, to the authors and thank you so much for giving me this arc. I'm really, really happy to be able to do this review. The entire collection is coming out March 12th, which is today as I'm filming this. So um, it probably happened a while back when I actually released this video. I'm going to be putting everything, including where you can order the book and also maybe where you can say hi to some of the authors in the description box down below. So if after this review you find yourself wanting to check this this anthology out, I highly recommend you do so, and I will be leaving everything down below so you don't even have to search it up. Let's talk about it. So, full disclaimer, I am not necessarily the biggest fan of short stories, but I found out for myself that that is not necessarily because I hate short story format or short, or like, short formats for storytelling. I just think that they are incredibly hard to nail, and they are incredibly easy to fuck up. <laughs> so, um, what I've noticed is what a lot of authors tend to do if they're not necessarily um, well-versed or have experience in writing short story formats, is they try to cram too many things into a story that would need a lot more pages in order to fully work out. And... I will say that some of the stories in this collection pleasantly surprised me in the pacing that they showed and how they tried to integrate scientific elements, like sci-fi elements, into the grander scheme of a, um, of a fairy tale, and also tried to replicate certain issues that, for instance, uh, fairy tale princesses faced within their respective story, but try to make this a bit more sci-fi-esque and instead of just relying on fairy tale curses and all of that. Um, for instance, instead of uh, Sleeping Beauty being uh, cursed to be stuck by a needle and then fall asleep for a hundred years, she's put into cryosleep because that is something that happens in a lot of sci-fi stories, to be quite precise. Um, Snow White, instead of being poisoned uh, by, by an apple, for example, is poisoned by a cyber attack. And so, for a long time, doesn't necessarily know what is or isn't true about the reality that she's currently living in. That's just two out of these seven examples, because I don't want to spoil too many of them, because I personally think that I'm sorry. Short stories are incredibly easy to spoil because they're just not very long, right? So it's very easy to basically just rattle off five points and tell you the entire story already. So not a big fan of that. Um, some of the stories I personally found to be a bit too fast paced for my liking. And I've noticed that at least I think for two or three of them, they basically ended at a point where I was just begging for them to give me more. Uh, it made sense to end there, but I'm really hoping that these authors revisit these stories and tell like a second one just to give me more because I was so intrigued by what they were presenting me with. So, please, this is a call for action. <laughs> I think one of my favorite ones was Everything Made Beautiful, which surprised me at first because it's one of the... F I, th I think I think the majority of these stories, if I remember correctly, are told in first person. And uh, if you have followed this channel for a while now, you might know that I'm not the biggest fan of first person narration because I personally think it's very easy to mess it up. And it's also very easy to basically have it there for no reason whatsoever. Um, so it surprised me when this was actually one of my favorite stories, probably also because it doesn't necessarily follow a princess or like a fairy tale princess as we know her, but her sister, stepsister to be precise. I was really intrigued by that concept. I really, really enjoyed that. And um, I think if I remember this correctly, Everything Made Beautiful was one of my favorite stories of the entire collection. Um, but the thing that fascinated me the most about these as I've already kind of mentioned, is how the authors took the fairy tale aspect of everything and made them as sci-fi-esque as possible. 
And the reason this fascinates me so much is because I personally think fantasy and sci-fi are two genres that have a lot of things in common, which is one of the reasons why, more often than not, they are basically smushed together, right? More often than not, people will talk about SFF, so sci-fi fantasy works. Um, sometimes you will look at your own bookshelves and be like, oh, I'm not entirely sure, is this fantasy? Is this sci-fi? Do I put, in which section do I put this? That is, if you organize your bookshelves at all, in which case, uh, kudos? Could not be me. I have too many books and too little space, and also my brain is very small, so it's not happening. Um, and so I was very intrigued to see what they were doing with this, because more often than not what people do with, with fairy tales or fairy tale retellings, unless they completely take the magic out entirely, is they do tend to put this more into the fantasy section. Because more often than not fairy tales have to do with curses and uh, with magic, there's there's fairies, there's, there's fairy godmothers, there's a lot of things happening that traditionally are found way more in the fantasy section of any kind of bookstore and or shelf you have yourself than in the fantasy section. And so what a lot of these authors did was they tried to make things as futuristic-esque and like technologically advanced-esque as possible in order to give it this specific sci-fi vibe. This was achieved through, for example, turning curses into technology, but sometimes some of these were also just set in almost dystopian-esque worlds um, that were benefiting from technology in one way or the other. And so instead of, for example, a prince's finding out that the populace is oppressed by a magician or something, she got to find out that the populace is oppressed by a tech firm conglomeration, if you want to call it that. And I really, really enjoyed seeing the authors work with what they were given, which were the fairy tales, and then turn them into scientific short stories. I was, I was a big, big fan of that. I really, really enjoyed that. So if that is something that interests you, specifically when it comes to fairy tale adaptations or fairy tale retellings, which I do believe we could call these short stories that, um, I do recommend you check this out just for that alone, because I had a lot of fun with it. It's also a lot of fun reading the stories and being like, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure I know which fairy tale this is. Um, because some of them are a bit more obscure than others. A lot of them use like the original fairy tale princess names, for example, so it's pretty easy to figure it out. But some of them don't, and some of them seem to be like at least a, a little bit more obscure in their references, which I found very funny. And I really, really enjoyed trying to piece things together and be like, oh yeah, this is what's going to happen, because it's so-and-so fairy tale. So that was also a lot of fun. One thing I do want to mention, though, is one of the stories left an impression with me that wasn't entirely favorable, and that was not just personal preference. Because as I said, I'm not necessarily the biggest short story fan, so it can also very easily happen that I just don't vibe with a short story collection that's given to me because I'm not necessarily always the person to come to when you want to know if your short story is good or not, because I don't really fully understand my own standards just yet, and I don't want to do that to someone. So um, I fully understand that sometimes for some of these stories, that's entirely on me if I personally think that, for example, there's too many things happening for too few amount of pages or something like that. But one story, which was the first one in the collection, which is called Into the Arms of Morpheus, um, had a very uncomfortable moment that I'm not entirely sure was intentional, and also I'm not entirely sure was intentionally uncomfortable for me. Uh, Into the Arms of Morpheus is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, and it's the one where, as I very briefly mentioned, instead of being pricked by a needle and then sleeping for a hundred years because of a curse, um, Sleeping Beauty basically gets to put into cryo sleep, sleep because, you know, sci-fi setting and everything. That I didn't mind. I personally, it's, it's also one of the longest stories, and I thought that storytelling-wise, it was actually one of the ones that I enjoyed more. However, obviously because this is a Sleepy Beauty retelling, we need some sort of Maleficent-esque character, right? Because we need an evil 
entity, let's just say it like that because it's not a fairy anymore, is it? Um, we need an evil entity that is the reason the entire thing is happening if we want to have a Sleeping Beauty retelling. And what I found very uncomfortable is the character who is the evil person persona in this in this case is, in my opinion, very much racialized in a very bad way because the Sleeping Beauty character is consistently described as being very fair-skinned and also having very beautiful blonde hair and blue eyes, which I don't mind, you know? It's pretty. That's fine. Um, however, the evil character, who is the, the reason why all of this is happening in the first place, even though the, the, the short story does allude to the fact that there's maybe a bit more going on in the backstory that we don't really have access to, which I'm also fine with, you know, you can leave that in the backstory and just tease it for me, that's okay, that's not my problem. But the character was very explicitly described as dark-skinned, with um, horns, which, again, fine, it's, uh, it's in space, I don't really care, and red eyes. And the people from his planet and his own race were described in a word that, for me, felt very, very similar to a very racialized German term. Now, the author is in German, and I'm pretty sure that the word itself does not mean anything in English, so I, I'm fairly certain that that specifically was a coincidence. Uh, uncomfortable coincidence for me as a German reader. Um, that wasn't necessarily great, but I do think that there were certain uncomfortable racialized tones about at least this specific short story. So I still recommend the anthology. I think the other authors did a fantastic job, and from a storytelling perspective, Into the Arms of Morpheus was also a good experience, but I want readers specifically readers of color and specifically black readers to be aware of this and maybe be a little bit careful when going into this story. I'm not trying to say that the author is a horrible person for doing so, and again, I'm pretty sure that this was also just exacerbated for me because the term very much uncomfortably reminded me of a German racial term that is very much not good. <laughs> so that's not something a predominantly English audience is probably going to experience in the exact same way. Um, so, yes, at the end of the day, as I said, I do recommend this anthology, I do recommend checking it out if anything of what I just said sounded interesting to you. I will be leaving the links down below um, to any pages, etc., where you can order this, whether it be in an ebook or in a physical copy. And I'm also going to be leaving the author's socials down there in case you want to check them out, in case you want to give them some love and or just retweet their stuff, like their stuff on Instagram, and so on and so forth. So, tell me in the comments down below, uh, first of all, if this interests you at all, and second of all, what is your opinion on fairy tale retellings? Because I'm very interested um, to hear what you're going to say about this, and whether or not you have some favorites, I would say, of like fairy tale retellings, or if you have some that you absolutely didn't like. Let me know in the comments down below, and as always, I hope that you have a nice reading experience yourself, and you continue having a nice reading experience, and I will see you soon.